All right, so what we were saying with regards to GPE previously was that the GPE of an object depends on three things. Mass of the object, acceleration due to gravity, and the distance through which that object has been displaced, um, or the height of the object. So we said with regards to that that we had to make some pretty big assumptions. Okay, and first assumption being that the acceleration due to gravity was constant, which we know is not true. Um, as we get further away from an object, uh, acceleration due to gravity is less you. Acceleration due to gravity does decrease. We haven't edited that out, by the way. Um, does decrease. <laughs> and also, if, if we're just talking about it, an object which we throw like a projectile or something, we can assume mass is constant. But if we talk about a rocket or something that burns fuel as it gets further up, then mass is not constant. So we also need to take that into account when we talk about this concept of work. Yeah? You forgot to press record. I'm pretty sure I pressed record. Yeah, pretty sure. Yeah. Alright, cool. Alright, so here we have our universal um, gravitational constant. Um, in this first equation, which looks a bit confusing, it's just another fancy way of saying um, gravitational potential energy. Okay, so we looked at MGH. This is our second, more correct version where we can use anywhere. So again, MGH only valid for low altitudes and where mass does not change. This equation is valid any point in the universe. Okay, so saying there that the potential energy, the energy stored within an object due to its position, depends on these three things which can, which can change. So the mass of the small object, mass of the big object, the distance between them, and this universal gravitational constant which is on your data sheet. So that is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. Uh, don't want to talk about the units just yet because I want you to derive the units for the universal gravitational constant without looking at the formula sheet. Um, if we have a look at the dot point, it's just a defined point. So basically it's like, you know, we can look at that and we can say, hey, dot point done. But we need to understand um, what work is actually talking about. And if we do understand what work is talking about, then we can, when we look at the, the satellites and the rockets, we can make sense of GPE and work a, a bit more so than if we just went through and straight just defined it. Okay, so it's defined as potential energy, sorry, GPE as the work done to move an object from a very large distance away. So by very large distance away, it means infinity. It's just using that word infinity is, yeah, it's what is infinity kind of thing, um, to a point in a gravitational field. This is the equation which we're given in the formula sheet. So for our two mark kind of defined question, that's all we need to do. We need to say a sentence. If you get a question that says define GPE, like what is it? Basically you just need to recite that and then give the equation. That's two marks, okay? Um, perhaps you, you may also talk about proportionality so you can see how potential energy depends directly on the products of the masses of the two objects and it depends inversely on their distance of separation. Okay, so we've got a definition, we've got an equation, and we talk about proportionality, okay? So where it says their GP of a body is energy of its mass due to position within a gravitational field. Whilst that is true, I would not want you to write that as your definition of GPE. Okay, GPE does depend where you are, but I want us to define it as that following one up there. Work done to move an object from a very large distance away to a point in a gravitational field. Which probably makes next to no sense currently, but when we talk a little bit more about work, you'll see why GPE is defined as that. Okay. So with the previous definition of GPE, where was GPE zero? On the surface, right? So when M, if GPE is MGH, M can't be zero, G can't be zero, um, uh, potential energy must be zero when H is equal to zero, which is surface of the Earth. So let's say, what's the GPE on the surface of the Moon? Zero. What's the GPE on the surface of Jupiter? Zero. So if we define like GPE as work done to move an object from one point to another point, is it saying if GPE is zero on Earth, zero on the Moon, I don't need to do any work on the object to get it there? It's kind of what it's saying, because GPE is the same. If we're defining um, changing GPE as work done, it's saying I don't need to do any work to get the object from the Earth to the Moon. So obvious problems with that, right? Obviously problems with that. So what if we define GPE from one particular point and one particular point only? So then we can make our um, our judgment of what GPE is with reference to a single point. So then we can compare GPE. So the point which we take is infinity. Oh, that's Hulk. 
<laughs> so, um, so we define we can define GP being zero at two places when h is equal to zero on the surface. The problem with that is comparison. We can also define GP as zero out there at infinity because our acceleration due to gravity, our lowercase g out there at infinity is also equal to zero. Okay, so basically GP infinity is equal to zero and we reference our GP with respect to that. If we move from infinity closer to the Earth, let's say, should GP go up or should GP go down? Okay, I'll do it this way. I have an object uh, on the ground, GP is zero, right? I lift the object up, put it on the table. Is GP greater than or less than zero? Okay, GP has increased, right, as I take it up. So consequently, as I put it back down, GP would go down. Okay, so think about that. If GP at infinity is zero, if I bring it closer, i.e. bring it down, what should happen to GP? Increase or decrease? Decrease, right? It should decrease. I'm bringing it closer to the Earth, GP should decrease. So if I define GP at infinity is zero, then GP must be negative at each and every single other point. Okay, so that's why we have this little negative sign there, because GP is always negative, with the exception of when our distance is equal to infinity. Okay, so it says this assumes that the only energy which has changed is GP. If an object also speeds up, two different energies are changing. We have to take that into account when we determine work. So that's why, say, if I you know put a satellite, or put an object at an altitude of ten thousand kilometers or something, it will take a certain amount of energy to get it there. But then, if I want to put it into orbit, what other type of energy do I need to give it? Kinetic energy. So it requires more work um, to be done to place an object into orbit than it does just to get the object there in the first place. We have to take that into account um, if we're to really determine how much work was done on the object. Okay, so a certain amount of work done to get it there in the first place, that's changing GPE. A certain amount of work done to get it into orbit, that'll be changing kinetic energy. Okay, and we'll look at the sum of both of those changes in energies to determine the total work done on that object. Okay, but for now, all we're doing is we're looking at stationary objects between point A and point B. We're not looking at changing kinetic energy just yet. Okay? So that's basically what we were just talking about before. Um, if zero, sorry, if GP at infinity is zero, then at each and every single other point, GP must be negative. And the other way of thinking about it is, so gravity is attractive. In order to um, take two objects apart, you'll need to physically do that yourself because you know, objects want to get close together because gravity is attractive. So if you leave those two objects to do what they naturally want to do, they'll come together. If you are doing, if you want them to do the opposite to what they naturally do, you need to force them to do that. You need to give them the energy to do that. You need to do work on those objects, which is why as objects get further away from each other, the GPE and hence, you know, the work done on the object increases towards zero. Okay, the zero is the maximum value. Okay. Object has its lowest or most negative GPE when it cannot move any closer to the center of mass of the massive objects. So that is for us, we would say the surface of the Earth is when GPE would be the lowest. Um, again, infinity is when GPE would be the, be the highest. And if you have a look at the equation of GPE, so assuming these, these three things up here should be constant, that is a constant. M1 is the mass of the object, which for now we're assuming is constant. M2 is the mass of the Earth, which is constant. So you can see the relationship between potential energy and distance of separation. And it's, it's a hyperbolic relationship. So you've got EP is proportional to negative one and a half. Okay, so what that looks like, so it's like saying Y is equal to minus one on X. So it's the same relationship as you guys see here. So you've got your little, what's this, vertical asymptote. Um, well, your vertical asymptote would be here when your R is equal to zero. What does this point here represent? That dotted line is, what does that represent? That's the surface of the Earth, right? So there's a certain minimum value which corresponds to the surface of the Earth. If it was to go on, you know, into the centre of the Earth, then it would approach um, the Earth uh, when x is equal to zero. Okay, so that's our general curve for GPE on any object, um, including the Earth. And this would more so be like a GPE per unit mass. 
Okay, so different objects would have different GPEs you know, on the surface of the Earth and at every single point. But if we have a look at, there was a question in an exam from this year which I quite liked, which rather than having GPE, it had GPE per unit mass. Okay, that's per mass of the object. So essentially we're taking out this variable. This, this will be different for different objects on the surface of the Earth. So if we take that out there, all we have now on the right hand side at a given point is constant. So you can get a generic graph of GPE per unit mass and you can apply that to each and every single object. But then what would you need to do to determine, say this is GPE per unit mass, and I've got a point here and I read off my GPE at that point is you know, minus one times 10 to the 10. What would I need to do to convert that from GPE per unit mass to GPE? Times all the mass, beautiful. Okay, so a question which we will do is asking about a 400 kilo satellite, um, thinking about changing GPE between two points and you're given a GPE per unit mass um, versus distance rather than GPE uh, per unit distance. We just need to take into account uh, to multiply by the mass. Simples. So basically it's saying all GPE depends on is where the object is. That's all it's saying. So GPE, well, it does depend on the mass of the object, but the GPE of a specific object depends solely on its position, okay? Solely on its distance away from the center of the object, okay? In this case, the center of the Earth. It doesn't matter if I go in a straight line from this point here to this point up there, or if I go in a nice little squiggly line from this point um, up to the same point, the same amount of work would need to be done because the change in GPE would be the same. Okay, if I go from here to there, straight line, or big curves and stuff, end up here again, change in GPE is still the same because my initial displacement and my final displacement are still the same. Therefore, my change in GPE would be the same. I actually need the same amount of work to get from this point to that point as from this point via some convoluted route to the same point. Okay? Uh, so that although the GPE of an object is negative, the change in GPE or work done on the object can be positive, and the change in GPE is equal to final minus initial GPE. Okay, so, so far we're saying work done, is change in GPE. Uh, change in GPE is just final minus initial GPE, which is what we're used to from year 11, so just final minus initial. Um, so if you can see what I've done with these equations here, so I've set up my final GPE, which is minus GM1, M2 on our final radius, minus our initial GPE, again minus GM1, M2 on our initial radius, but then I've done something from here to here, or well, done two things. What have I done to get from there to there? Okay, so I've taken my GM1, M2 out. I've also taken out my negative sign out. And I've switched around the bottom here because I've taken out that negative sign, right? So it changes from final minus initial to initial minus final. Okay, now let's see if this all kind of makes sense. These values here, GM1, M2, all positive. Okay, G is positive, M1 is positive, M2 is positive. So for me to do positive work, this must also be positive. True? That must also be positive. Positive work is me getting the object further away. Now let's see if that makes sense. In order for this to be positive, this number here, one over R initial, must be bigger than one over R final. True again, right? So would R initial be bigger or smaller than R final? Xander, tell me please. Smaller, cool. So if this value is bigger, if one over R initial is bigger, then R initial must be small. Okay, which kind of makes sense, right? Because that's saying we're moving from a small distance to a larger distance away. We're going from here to there or something like that. I'm doing positive work on it, so it should make sense. 